Hello friends, David Vos here, and this is number two in the series about the magicians. Uh, you know, it's just mind-boggling, I know, for some people who are just now starting to think about this. You know, the Bible says you shouldn't be a magician. So there's a lot of confusion here, and it just looks like, well, wait a minute, isn't Simon Magus the magician in the Bible? Wasn't he condemned by the apostles? And there's even a place in, in the book of Acts where there were a bunch of magic practicers and, and they were really ashamed of what they were doing because the apostles came along and showed them up by the power of the Holy Spirit. And they all brought their magic practicing books and burned them in a fire. So the early Christians evidently were burnt book burners. Oh, man. See, well, then, Dave, I mean, there you go. All that stuff you just said in the other video is just a bunch of baloney. You don't know what you're talking about. You see, here, here's the problem. There are probably three or four different places in the book of Acts that talk about something that might concern us here. Uh, but we've got to, to understand that these, that, that, Christianity has definitely, on one hand, they have um, obscured purposefully a whole great deal of this information. I'm not sure how this all originally started. For instance, how in the world could people who follow Judaism come to a place where they thought that magic was wrong because after all God condemned the magic practicing priests of Pharaoh but at the same time what constitutes magic of course in this scenario then is that they had this they were sorcerers I mean the Pharaohs had practiced magical practices it says in the Bible it talks about Janice and Jamries how you know, they were condemned because they tried to oppose Moses. Well, it's talking about the magic practicing priests of Pharaoh. So what Pharaoh was doing was practicing magic. And what did they do? Well, they couldn't interpret the dreams that Joseph could interpret. They couldn't, it, the ones in, in Babylon couldn't interpret dreams like Daniel could do it. Hmm, I see. So... Magic practicers couldn't interpret dreams, but whatever it is that Daniel and Moses and Joseph was, they could do that. Because the Bible actually says that Joseph was a diviner, it uses the word diviner. And then elsewhere in the Old Testament it says, don't divine. Oh, but read further. This is the problem that people have never figured out. Everywhere you go, they're, they're missing part of the puzzle here, purposefully, I think. Maybe not modern people doing it purposely, but it's gotten shifted for so many years, maybe over a thousand years, that people now no longer understand what they're reading due to mistranslations or whatever. But, but you see, um, <clears throat> the magic practicing priests, they had uh, some sort of ability to turn staves into serpents this is classical magical arts turning mundane things into living things you say well yeah but that's not christianity you see and that's not even judaism because they were said told not to do that and yet moses goes and does it so we're going to say that these practicing priests of of babylon and egypt didn't interpret dreams and that's what separates it somehow no because that's not what it says it does say that the magic practicing priests tried to interpret the dreams that was part of their thing it's just that our father in heaven sort of caused the spirit you know elsewhere in the bible it says that jehovah would send lying spirits down so there's a lot to this right individuals who conjured up spirits in order to get 
prophecy or or perform miracles they had to be able to they had to have authority if you talk if you look in the new testament it says that that this one particular guy and he was a jew and we're going to get back to that it was of the a religion of that people there in judea at the time and he was going around practicing these magic practices and doing exorcisms this is another thing that that magic practicing priests would do they would do exorcism it says it right there in the new testament and this, the, the sons of Sceva, it talks about that in the New Testament. And they went over there and they started trying to expel demons from people. And they did it pretty, for all practical purposes, it looks like they were doing it the correct way. Because they said, you know, in the name of Jesus, right, get out. Uh, in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. And, and the demon looks at him and says, well, we know Jesus and we know Paul. Well, we don't know who you are and they attacked him and it says that the fame of the apostles went out throughout the land in other words they became known for the fact that they had some something special and this guy didn't well what was the problem then was it the fact that he was a magician and the apostles weren't well they were doing the same things just like moses and, and the magicians just like daniel and the magicians joseph was a diviner that word divination is used quite a bit in the Old Testament. And people, uh, certain prophets use divination. In fact, divination just means to divine for an answer from the divine. Get an answer from the divine. I mean, why would that be wrong? Visions is part of the whole New Testament package. They were doing miracles. I mean, you could walk by Peter's shadow and get healed. He was a powerful magician. I mean, unless you don't want to use that word. I mean, so we got to figure out what it is that they did. Because whatever it was that the apostles were doing and that Jesus was doing, it's not enough just to say, oh, well, see, there's a scripture that says that, that Simon the magician was condemned. So therefore, we don't believe in magicians. Well, wait a minute. The point is there that they were, they were drawing a parallel between this man who was a magician and the apostles. Now, why were they making a parallel? Well, because there was something similar going on. People were saying, wow, look at Simon, the magician. Oh, wow, look at the apostles. Why didn't they go, oh, yeah, but you see, these guys are magicians and these guys are Christians. There's a difference. It's obvious right there. They didn't do that. They, they, they were like surprised. They were amazed by uh, the miracles that Simon was doing. He was definitely able to do miracles. It says that in the New Testament. The only difference is that Simon, a magician, was saying that he was somebody great. And all the people that were watching him do these miracles began to say, oh, this man is the power of God. He is the power, the great one. Uh, I don't know, what does that mean? It doesn't say they thought he was the Messiah, but they thought he was somebody pretty great. Well, what's the difference? When they saw Paul and uh, Barnabas, they said, oh, these guys are gods. And they started calling them uh, you know, Zeus and stuff. They started calling them gods in the flesh. They One time they bowed down to Paul and, and they said, oh Lord, you know, they saw him doing miracles. So what's the difference? Well, because in the case with the apostles, they picked these people up and said, don't worship me, buddy. You see, we're doing this in the name of Jesus. He's the power of God. So what was wrong with this Simon Magus, well, he claimed to be the power of God. That's what was wrong. Not the fact that he was a magician and the apostles weren't. Because the Bible mentions a magician and then points out that that magician was bad, then we shouldn't be magicians. It would be the same way. It would be just like saying, well, because there were three Magi that worshipped Jesus, then all the Magi must be the true followers of Jesus and nobody else. See? There's examples of magicians bowing down and worshiping Jesus. And there are examples of magicians in the New Testament that tried to become a Christian. They got baptized, but their heart wasn't right. Now, so what's that story really talking about? Because instead of taking that story to mean that, oh, magicians are bad, perhaps we're supposed to understand our scriptures a little bit more
clearly. We find that usually when there's something like that in the Bible, that it has a much deeper meaning. You see, this is a new thing. Before Jesus came, John the Baptist was in the desert and they were doing all of their rituals and things like, for instance, baptism. Uh, they had rituals. Baptism means washings. So if they were unclean, they had to go get washed. And they had all kinds of baptisms, as it says in Hebrews chapter 6. There wasn't just one baptism. Now today, Christianity's lost this whole notion. They think, oh, you just go get baptized one time. So do a little ritual. You can do that kind of a ritual, which is part of magic ritual ceremony. But as a Christian, you see, because we don't know what that means, we can do that. But all of these other rituals that the magicians did, you can't do anymore. You know, we can't be exorcists now and do rituals to cast out devils. But you see, the reason for this story is because this new thing came up. Jesus was the Messiah. The Magi, they represent all this ancient religion from Babylon and Egypt. They represent the great priesthood handed down from Melchizedek. And they were basically saying, okay, we've come from the east. We're authorities from the east. And we're saying, yep, this is the one. See, that's why that's in the Bible. That moment, that little story. Because it's trying to say that they gave the go-ahead. They're like, okay, we're ancient priests from the east. And we're letting you know, yep, this is the one. Go for it. This is Jesus. He's the Messiah. He's the one prophesied. And they took off their crowns and they took off their robes and they said, he's the authority. And John the Baptist says, he, you know, he's, he's the one, you know, I'm nothing. You, I ain't even worthy to untie his sandal. John the Baptist was a great priest in the line from the descent from Elijah. But he acknowledged that Jesus was the one. He would go on increasing, but John says, I'm going to go on decreasing. So the Magi, it's the same story. There's different groups that have different orders, different mystery schools. And they were all coming to say, we give our blessing upon this particular man because he's the one you should follow now. All right, so then there's Simon the Magician. So he's got, he's representing another group of individuals. These were Jews who were practicing exorcisms, like the sons of Sceva, who were saying, you know, hey, let's try to act like Christians. You see, we don't really understand what we're talking about. We're going by the old magical practicing uh, rituals and things that, you know, we're trying to understand all of this, but our heart's not right because we're trying to make money from it. We really didn't go through the proper channels and get initiated properly. We don't know what we're doing because... Um, we're trying to pay money to get the Holy Spirit, right? We're trying to um, do like Paul, and we're going to go out and exercise demons from people. But we say, hey, in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches, be gone. <laughs> and well, you see, even the devils knew, all right, come on now. You can't just pretend, you know, it, it isn't like that. Those devils, if you don't know how to bind them correctly, will turn on you. And that's what happened in that situation. You see, that's why it, you have to be properly initiated. You just don't sit in a circle and conjure up a demon and say, all right, now I tell you to go do this and that, and buddy, you better do it now. So by whose authority? Okay, in the name of the gods, in the name of this, and by this authority and this ritual, and I'm going to quote this command, and I'm going to bind you by this spell. It has to be correct and ac accurate. You see, this guy didn't know how to do it. The sons of Sceva didn't know how to do it. And so the demons came and they attacked him. And so then you've got Simon Magus. And he said, you know, I'll give you money if you'll give me the power of the, uh, of the like the apostles, to lay on hands whom, whomsoever I want and give the Holy Spirit. See, it was a lucrative business for him, and he really didn't know what he was doing. And things were changing. So this represent a change of the guard. In the ancient times, the priesthoods existed, and they had these, these ceremonies, initiations, but many of them were beginning to 
forget what they were doing. They're like, Lord, are you the one to come? You know, we want to know somebody authority come along and tell us what to do because we're still doing these rituals and we've kind of lost the power that we used to have. Moses was good at it. Daniel was great and he was the head of the Magi. But now we've gone on down and like some of us are kind of forgetting what we, you know, there's different schisms and sex and we don't know what to do and we're looking for the Messiah. And so Simon, a magician from one of the schools, he comes along and he wants power and he wants authority and he wants to join in this thing. So this is representing handing over, you know, changing the guard. This particular order group that was uh, headed up by Simon the Magus, the Bible saying, no, don't go that route because Jesus is the one. And in his name, we're going to do these things. This is an orderly process. The, the gods of heaven aren't just up there just sitting around waiting for human beings to come up with a good plan, right? Our father in heaven's fighting for us and he's got angels up there and they're fighting the battle with the devil and they're looking for such like ones and, and, and they've got a plan. And so by divine fiat, Jesus was born on the earth. And the angel came down and they sang songs and give glory to God in the heights and goodwill towards men because one has been born into you, the savior of man. And so Simon Magus didn't get the, you know, didn't get the memo and he's like, wow, look at the apostles. They're performing powerful works, more powerful than I can perform with these other rituals that we've been doing and we've been getting some success maybe. But this man is Jesus and all the demons They've heard of him. We've heard of Jesus. You see, oh, we know who you are. Have you come to torment us before our time? Well, see, they get the memo. They know it's in the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow. And the apostles didn't take any of the glory or any of the credit. So that's what's going on with that. There's very few times the Bible even uses the word magician. We've said that in the Old Testament, there's a lot of things that God, Jehovah, didn't want you to do. But that doesn't mean we're not supposed to do them because he was a, a God who was angry and full of vengeance and he was selfish and he was jealous of all the other gods. And what he was really saying is, I want you to come to me through the priesthood. They practice divination. I don't mind divination, but you have to divine from me. I am your God. You will not bow down or divine or go to the other gods and divine, because you'll only come to me. So, if you don't believe that the the Aaronic priesthood were diviners, uh, what do you think divination is? Getting an answer through an oracle, through some sort of mechanism, method. There were various different types and ways that people would re attain an answer from the divine. Um, but, the priests, what they would use was something very similar that every nation used. They had a Urim and a Thummim. And uh, we don't know exactly what it looked like because there's no pictures, but we basically know what it was. It had 12 stones and they were this sort of like crystals, each crystal representing a different month. 12 having to do with astrology. To this day, we get a lot of the games that we have from the Aaronic breastplate and this these ancient oracles. The Urim and Thummim, we're not certain exactly what they look like. They probably had various shapes and sizes depending on where, you know, it's not like you had a factory pumping out dice exactly square with, you know, like today, that they all look exactly the same. But, you know, sometimes you had to, you know, improvise. And maybe a lot of times in certain areas like Native American stuff would use bones that were little, you know, look like little, sometimes they were sort of balanced so that you could roll them and they'd, so many times out of, so many times they'd lie on this side or they'd lie on that side and they used them like dice and they'd paint little spots on them or something. Sometimes they'd take pieces of wood and make squares and paint the sides, but they had various ways to make these dice. So how, in fact, some translations say they'd, translate the word Urim and Thummim as dice because there was two of them and of course modern dice have one to six on each one and two of them make 12. It has to do with 12 because it all of these oracles have to do with 12 because it has to do with astrology. It wasn't just random like throw the dice you know 
even with dice, it's not random. Some people use dice and play a game of random stuff, but dice is usually used in connection with a board. And there's always a wheel or the wheel of fortune or something. Um, dominoes look a lot like dice because they have the six on one part and then the second part has six. And so it is up to 12. The chess, uh, checkers, all of these games, even the deck of cards. Most people don't know this, but a deck of cards is almost identical to the tarot. And this is why a lot of Baptists back in the day and Christians wouldn't even use cards and wouldn't play with them. Because, you know, at one point they were tarot cards and then pretty soon people were playing with them. They call them playing cards, but they were the same as tarot. And so you had 52 uh, cards in a deck, which is the 52 weeks in the year. And and uh, the four suits is the four seasons and stuff. And, and you know, you have... You, you, you lay down a, a queen of hearts and maybe you're going to find love or, or whatever. Diamonds are going to have fortune, you know. Or So, these ancient things that we have, relics today, all it all goes back to divination or astrolo astrology. Remember, the magic practicing priests were also astrologers, according to another account. Three astrologers, three magic or magi. In the, and that came and worshipped Jesus. So it's the same thing. These There are no other practices. That's it. There's divination. You know, seek for an answer. Visions. Sometimes you have dreams, but when you have a vision, you have to use a, a crystal ball. Or as the Apostle Paul says, we see through a, a glass darkly or a dark glass. But then we shall be face to face. Some people, like Ast uh, Nostradamus, would look into a flame to get a vision. But early Christians had visions. They did miracles. But the one thing they didn't do was say, oh, I am somebody great, because we need humility. That's not what this is about. Janus and Jambres, see, were opposing Moses. And so you don't do that. It didn't mean that what they were doing was wrong. If, if throwing down a, a staff and trying to magically make it into a snake is wrong, then Moses was doing something wrong. If consulting the, tw the astrology is wrong, then the Aaronic priesthood was wrong because they would always consult the ephod and the 12 stones and throw down the Urim and Thummim to get an answer from Jehovah. So what about Simon Magus? You know, why does it say that there was this magician who um, was condemned? I mean, doesn't that kind of sound suspicious? Like, well, maybe we're not supposed to be magicians then. No, that's not the parallel there. As we said, it's not saying, oh, so uh, there was this evil person who was doing miracles but he was doing it from the dark side and then there was these apostles why were they called apostles was that the kind of magic they were performing and it's as opposed to their no apostles just meant they were sent forth from jesus they were ambassadors to teach what jesus was teaching what was jesus teaching he sent them forth he said I want you to cast out demons and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What does it mean to bind? You bind spells. That's how you, that's what it means to bind on earth because you did ceremonial ritual magic to bind on earth so that you could control the spirits. And Psalms 102 says that the angels carry out the word when you speak a word with authority in the name of someone who has authority, the angels have to carry out this word. We talked about in the last video how Daniel, he fasted for 40 days and then fell sick for 21 days. Well, that's a, a particular uh, type of ceremony where a person would conjure up this demon in order to get power over the demon. In the ancient Zoroastrian religion, that has come down to us as Aladdin's lamp and the genie and so forth. And the genie would come and say, Master, see, 
You're my master, and now I have to do what you say. This is the this is the ancient Magi religion. And it's the same arts that were practiced in Egypt, in Babylon. There were magic priests in Egypt. There were magic practicing priests in Babylon. And there were magic practicing priests in Jerusalem. But that God was a jealous God, and he commanded that they do not practice their magic except through his priests only. But the New Testament says, however, King David didn't go by their, the priesthood there in Jerusalem, but he went by another priesthood in which there was no lineage from Aaron. And he got a priesthood that allowed him to be a high priest, higher than the, the Aaronic priesthood, so that he could go in and eat from the showbread that was in the temple. But that wasn't wasn't lawful for a man to eat that bread if you were just a an ordinary person you had to be a high priest a high priest but because David wasn't even from Aaron's tribe he couldn't have been a priest of Aaron but the Bible says he, he acquired this Melchizedek priesthood and it explains in detail in the in the Old Testament about how David received that ephod from a priesthood that was up in the northern ten tribes in a place called Bethel. So then he began to prophesy. And the word there in the Hebrew means to act ecstatically. Dancing and he was singing. And see, this is what is really crazy. It's come down to us. All of these words and we don't understand any of it. Well, don't divine. The rest of the verses don't divine unless you're doing it through my own priesthood but these other gods i don't want you to go bow down to them you bow down to me but don't bow down to their their gods in psalms or uh, deuteronomy 32 8 as we said in the septuagint version you have to read it in the septuagint version because it's it's clearer there but the most high god el el yon the god of daniel all the way through the book of daniel most of the book of psalms which is the god of david el el yon divided up the nations, the world, into 70 nations. And here's that word lot, throw in the lots, right? Divination. And Israel's lot was Jehovah's. So Jehovah, by divine divination, was given this people called Israel. The other nations had each one of them, 70 nations, they each had their own God. And you see, even the 70 has to do with astrology because it's just a, a rounding off the, of the number 72. That's why when Jesus chose 12 apostles, he also chose 70 also. Because in astrology, you have 12, 12 houses and there are 24 elders around God's throne. God's in the center. God's in the, the North Pole, right? He sits at the North Pole and it sits there and it spins and... God's in the light, the north, sitting on his throne. And around his throne, the stars, the astrological stars, the starry heavens revolve. And there are 24 elders around his throne. And that's the 12, night, 12 hours of night and the 12 hours of day. And there are three deacons in each of these houses, which makes 72. Because three times 12 is 36. You go around twice, so that's 72. So all of this has to do with this ancient astrology throughout the Bible. So the fact that Simon Magus or Simon the Magician was a magician means nothing, you know, derogatory. It doesn't say it's because he was a magician that we don't like him. No, the apostles rebuked him because he asked to have the Holy Spirit. He, he wanted to pay money. He thought that Having this power, he could get gain from it. There were those who were practicing magic for gain, for money. If you see somebody who's going to read your fortune for money, is they're getting gain or they're, they're you know, uh, doing, uh, you know, trying to... The only reason they want to help people is because they, they, they think it's lucrative. Stay away from them. See, so Simon the magician was doing it for money. And he thought he was powerful. Maybe he didn't. Maybe it was just a big lie to make people think he was powerful. Perhaps he didn't really have the ability to do miracles. Perhaps he was a, a, a man who was pretending. Because, you see, he didn't have the Holy Spirit. 
So he went and got baptized because he could see what the apostles were doing. And he said, all right, I got baptized. Now, lay your hands on me so I can have the power that whomever I lay hands on shall, you know, receive the Holy Spirit. And I can do these great miracles that these guys are doing because my miracles are probably just fake, right? And people are like, whoa, but I want to do what the apostles are doing. See, I want to do the magic, that, the real magic, because they're doing it in the name of someone of power, someone of authority. That's why, you know, these uh, the sons of Sceva were going around saying, you know, I know... Uh, uh, there's a demon in you and, and in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches, get out, right? They were trying to emulate what Paul was doing, but they didn't have the Holy Spirit. It starts off there in Acts talking about how uh, the Apostle Paul went into Ephesus and they had uh, been baptized. See, they knew about John the Baptist and the rituals that they were doing out in the desert and they had they'd heard John's preaching. But... Um, Paul says, have you ever had the Holy Spirit? Have you had the anointing? Do you know Christ within you? This isn't just about, you know, practicing magic. Just so that you can pretend you're somebody or make some money off of it. Nowhere in the New Testament or anywhere in the Bible does it say magic is wrong. Now, there's a place that... Uh, there was a, a, a woman that was following Paul around and, and she was saying, this man is, you know, speaking about the way. He's showing you the way. Actually, in the Greek, it's saying showing you a way as if she was saying, look, you know, there's many paths to, to the maker, you know, to God. And this man is good. He's showing you a way. I don't know if that's significant, but she just kept doing it and doing it. Obviously, somebody was following Paul around and yelling and, and making a disturbance. Now, the Bible doesn't tell you much more about that, except that the Apostle Paul turned around and uh, cast a demon out of that woman. You see, uh, the Apostle Paul did exorcism just like any other magician. And then, because of the sons of Sceva and this woman in the area that he was preaching, he got famous and people began to realize that he had certain, the Apostle Paul and the other apostles and Barnabas and Peter, they were looked up to. They knew they had something real and they were humble men. You know, silver and gold have I none, but in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. So they were like, wow, these men, these, these people have uh, the mark of, of something that's real. Okay. Magic, is it real? Well, these guys are really showing us that what magic is, is to, to, to have a, some sort of power and authority over the demons. Authority isn't something, you know, just... A lot of people think it's just a, a, a magical spell, see? It has nothing to do with the spell itself. It's the conjuring up the power. It's, it's through faith in God. In the ancient days... They used to use the names of God, various names of God, to gain control of demons. But when Christ came because he is the firstborn among many brethren and the head of the body and the son of the living God. He has the authority. You see, and so in heaven and in earth, all creation has to bow down to his authority. And so you're acknowledging the arrangement of the true and living Most High, who came to Melchizedek and said, this is the truth, and this is the bread and the wine, and this is the Holy Eucharist, the Holy Communion. You need to fellowship with the Father and the Son. And Jesus came to give us that revelation of the Father and to, to offer us all the communion, not just these priests. Because for a long time, Religions and groups like Judaism and Babylonianism and these groups, these higher priesthoods, wanted to keep this power to themselves. In many cases, they didn't want to keep it themselves. Not all of them. Some of them wanted to help people and give it to others. But like Jesus said, you can't give your pearl before swine. They were murdered and killed because there were other individuals that wanted this power. And they were battling sorcerers. Like in the days of Moses and Pharaoh. See, Judaism... They had divination, they, they had practiced magic, and they were able to bind 
These are spells that they were they were given to, to, to bind certain spirits, to heal, to for various reasons. They would um, use these spells to uh, have safety going out to battle or to build their home, to heal, or to be blessed, to have fortune. And so Jesus comes along and says, look, this is how you do it. I want you to bind on earth that you bind in heaven. And I want you to have authority over the, over the scorpions and serpents. You'll tread upon them. See, this is what people have been doing. And then you do it in my name and we can have it, we can get it done. But here's what he taught people that was different. He taught people with authority. He explained what people, you know, back in the day, only the priests were allowed to do this. You had to be a high priest to, to go into the temple and, and do these things. And, and basically, this jealous God was keeping him from all of this. And Jesus came and revealed that this God was a, a liar. He said, you couldn't live forever. You're going to die. And the day you eat from that fruit of knowledge, you're going to die. Well, what knowledge? It could also be the knowledge of spiritual things. The knowledge of the power that you have within yourself. Because that God wanted to keep us slaves. He didn't want you to know your potential. Like the Apostle Paul says, that Christ within you, the hope of glory. So, it says that, a lot of people point out there, it says that as soon as they saw that the Apostles were greater than these other magic practicing priests, well, it doesn't always say they were magic practicing priests, but sometimes they translate it that way and it, it, it skews it because in the book of Acts, it says that they were busybodies. That's the word, meddlers. So I guess somewhere back in the day, somebody was translating that and they thought, okay, meddlers, maybe they were meddling in divination. Well, it doesn't say that at all. It just says meddling or busybodies. So what is it talking about? What were these people doing, that these meddlers, that they took out their, all these books, it doesn't say what kind of books, and burned them. And so many people point to that as proof that, you know, we're not supposed to be magicians because they took their magic practicing books and burned them. Well, it doesn't say they were magic practicing books. It doesn't say they were practicing magic. It says they were meddlers. What were they meddling in? Well, the sons of Sceva were Jews. They were Judeans. And so, of course, they believed in the law. And they didn't have the Holy Spirit. But as Jews, magic practicing Jews, it was something that Jews did too. Uh, many people in Judea were practicing exorcisms and magic. There were many ancient magic practicing uh, documents that, that I've talked about. Somebody else pointed out the other day, I forgot to mention the book of Thoth. It's a very important book. Read that book and you'll learn a lot about this ancient magic from Egypt. But what I'm trying to talk about here is for those of us who have been Christians in the Judeo-Christian tradition, we've been told that this is all wrong and this is all evil. And so it's very difficult to get people to understand that all the stuff that they've been taught is just propaganda and that it's been twisted and and manipulated and they can no longer understand their scriptures because you read a verse where it says that these people were practicing magic and they were humiliated and the apostles said don't you do that anymore and then they had to burn their books you say well there you go you're not supposed to be magicians it's so schizophrenic because the rest of the entire bible the apostles around having visions healing people raising the dead this is stuff that magicians did like moses and, and the pharaoh and throwing down the serpent and they're throwing down the staff it becomes a serpent and you know, people taking handkerchiefs that Peter had touched, right? Or the Apostle Paul and said they got healed from the handkerchief. That's magic. There's quite a bit of that activity going on in the book of Acts. Exactly the same things that Simon Magus did. It says that Simon Magus did these, these uh, wonders and people were amazed. The Apostles did wonders and they were amazed. So what's the difference? Well, as we said, Jesus came as one who had authority and he, he taught us that the whole purpose for this ancient religion is to find that inner 
spiritual man of power. You can't do it by being selfish and greedy. You have to have the Holy Spirit. You have to listen to the Holy Spirit. And, the, and, and Simon Magus wanted the Holy Spirit, but he had his heart was wrong. He thought that for money he could attain it. That's the problem. You can't get this because somebody, you know, for, for some sort of divine favor just for you. that You can lord it over other people. See, that's what happened. That's why the apostles were upset because in the Old Testament, there were individuals that were using this power for gain. Like Jehovah, who was a very jealous God, and he didn't want anybody to have any of this authority you had to do it through him and only if you were you know the women had to be quiet and they couldn't even you know do you know in judaism it was even it was unlawful for thousands of years for a woman to even be taught they couldn't even be taught the torah women were not allowed to even learn the torah they just they were never they were told you sit down you be quiet you do what you were told you go over there and have babies and we're not even going to show you in the scripture where it says that you know just just believe us. Just do what, we're, what you're told. Kind of like the Catholic Church. They didn't want the Bible to be printed. But once it started getting printed, Jerome and Huss, the Protestants started printing it. So then, you know, to try and prove that they were wrong. And so then it was like a dueling Bibles. So the Catholics made the their version of, of Scripture. And it had Apocrypha. And the Protestants liked the Apocrypha because it had the book of to Tobit in it, which was the book of magic as we said and so they got rid of that book and you know today it's interpreted and, and, and translated incorrectly it doesn't say that these people were magic practicing individuals it just says they were meddlers what were they meddling in if you look at the context of what's talking about there in the book of acts it's saying that they were christians doing these acts so what were they ashamed of if they were ashamed of magic, then it was Christians who were practicing magic. So it wasn't magic that they should have been ashamed of. It was how they were doing it. Look at the context of what it's saying. It says they were meddlers, busybodies. So we're not sure what the word means. But it does, it's not the word magi. Yeah, Simon was a magician. It does use the word there. But it doesn't condemn him for being a magician. It just says that he wanted all the power for himself. Where they were burning their books, what books were they? Where these were Jews that were practicing these arts. What they were burning is certain teachings that Judaism had at the time where they didn't give glory to our Father in heaven and they didn't believe in Jesus. Because there was another group that were opposed to Jesus and what he was doing. Because you see, the devil at that time was running around saying, this man's got a way... And, and trying to disrupt the services that the Apostle Paul was trying to help people to learn about Christ and get the Holy Spirit and have a good heart. But just like Janice and Jambres, you see, they tried to compete with God's Holy Spirit. They were argumentative and, and, and boasting, boasting and trying to be, you know, trying to say they were something great. You know, I'll do it, just, you know, I'll pay you, right? Give me that power. That's all this is about. So the books that they were burning, we don't know what books they were burning. But I really don't think they were burning Tobit. That was in our scripture, a book of magic. I really don't think they were burning all the books that taught, you know, John the Baptist and, and the followers of Jesus about binding on earth that they might bind in heaven these spells, how to cast out exorcism of demons and how to heal See, Christianity today, we're schizophrenic. We're talking about, oh, we shouldn't do anything like, uh, you know, like magic. We don't know what magic is, but don't do it. You know? Oh, but but we're supposed to, um, we're supposed to have visions, but don't do it. You know, that was in the old time. We, you know, the early apostles did visions and they healed people. They did exorcisms and see, we don't do that anymore. And that's not what it's all about because. Uh, you see, uh, we've got our own interpretation now, and we're kind of muddying the waters and confusing people and trying to tell people. You know, kind of like Judaism that was saying, hey, I don't want you divining from other gods. But you can divine from my priests if they come to me. See, doesn't say in the Bible what most Christians think. Is somehow in the Bible says that Jehovah is the only true God. It doesn't really say that. I know in the New World Translation, sometimes they use, they, they translate 
several places they say the only true God. Well, that's ridiculous. It, it, nowhere in the Bible does it ever say the only true God. It does say that there was one God the Father out of whom all things came and one Lord Jesus through whom all things were made. And Jesus said, ye are gods, and the scripture cannot be broken. Yes, we have one Father, the Father of the gods. But nowhere in the Bible does it say, in the New Testament, that there's only one divine being. It says that we're all in him. We're all one. It's a little bit different. Jesus said, ye are gods. Just like the serpent told Eve in the garden, you will not die. You're going to live forever. I'm going to give you the tree of life. Like Jesus said, I'm going to offer you the tree of life. It's a promise from our Father in heaven who's love. You'll not die, but you'll become like God. So what is this that people are saying? It's somehow or another the New Testament's condemning magicians. It doesn't. And nowhere in the Bible condemns a person for being a magician. Because being a magician means that you bind spirits. It means that you heal people. It means that you sometimes... There are ceremonies for resurrecting the dead. If it's the word magician that you're upset with and you don't like, because if you call yourself a magician, you can do all these things, but don't call yourself a magician because that's wrong. Well, then how come Daniel didn't mind calling himself a magician? In fact, Daniel was the head of the magicians. How come... Three of these magicians, the Magi, came and worshipped before the Lord and acknowledged the birth of Jesus as the Christ. And those Judeans were condemned by Jesus and they rejected him. Yeah. So, the Bible uses the word magician, I think, about six or seven times. The Old Testament, it talks about it there where the magic practicing priests of Pharaoh were doing certain powerful works. And Moses was also able to match everything that they were able to do. And then Moses, you know, set up a priesthood through his brother Aaron, the Levites, and they practiced divination and they had an oracle and they set it in the temple and they divined answers from God. All the way through the Old Testament, you can read about how they would go up to the priests and ask questions and they would go into the, go to the oracle and would use the Urim and Thummim and divine an answer, this astrological divination board. The New Testament, well, and as we said, in the Old Testament, divination, it says don't do it to other gods, but certainly Joseph and Daniel and Moses and many of the prophets were diviners. It uses that word for the prophets to divine something that they did. Now, when we get to the New Testament, it doesn't say at Pentecost they all became diviners because that we're talking about a different language, the language of Greek. So it describes some of the things that they were doing. In those days, they understood that what a magician did, they had these, you know, their, in their writings, they had the tree of life and they had the serpent and they had the chakras and, and they had the uh, cannabis and the incense. And they would sit in their circle and conjure up a spirit and bind the spirits. And these are, you know, cast spells, blessings and cursings. Did you know the Old Testament? talks about how in the name of Jehovah they would cast uh, blessings or, or, or curses using his name or of the names of the gods. What do you think it means that they would curse or bless? Because to bless, you see, is, is, a, is a magical ceremony to, do, to make a blessing and to curse someone. You've heard about how the witches would make spells and curses well which wise one wizards 
they would curse because you see let's say that you had an enemy who was going to come and destroy your your village right they were coming right now they were getting their horses ready and they were coming to wipe and rape your wife and your children and murder your family and what are you going to do well they had certain ceremonies where they would their their witch doctor see that's just a word that we put on them we don't even know the native american language or, or the or whatever nation we're talking about the scythians or whatever they had the same priesthoods up in the north in europe they called them druids and you can one day we'll do a video on this how the druids were basically priests and they were of this high bloodline and it's where we get the, the understanding of dracula and werewolves and stuff like this is, this is a very interesting subject it's not what you think it is they were certain high level blue bloods or bloodlines and the holy grail and they had certain rituals and ceremonies where they were anointed king and uh, when their nation needed help they would do certain spells to bless and protect their nations so this was an ancient priesthood well israel used these same divination spells and curses to protect their nation they would do a ceremony to stop or curse or damn or stop their progress so they weren't blessed in their efforts so the spirits would not take their side because the spirits are going to follow that which is the authority see if you don't take control of the the spirits that the, the physical world around you the elemental spirits then it just goes chaos and people are fighting in war and the people have to take authority and the new testament explains what that authority is it's love it's faith see it's not about fear and chaos which is what we've got now with christians not knowing what they're believing in they're afraid of everything they don't have any knowledge of what these ancient ceremonies are about what we've proven is that magic was something that goes all the way back it's right there in the in book of exodus judaism uses divination and sorcery and the apostles used the lots that the aaronic priesthood used the the what basically dice it says that when um judas died and hung himself that they were short an apostle so they got together and they cast lots to see who would be the next apostle and it fell upon matthias so there you go the apostles themselves were using divination and there's very many different places in the scriptures that we can find where the apostles are using this divination these magical arts the only difference is, is that they had found the person that all of this religion was pointing to the coming of the Christ this is why the three magicians from the East the Magi came and bowed and gave Jesus and his mother these gifts because they knew he was the one and all of history pointed to this so Christianity is new in that sense that we have to know who the authority is the divine beings are in the spirit and there's wars the gods are battling it says this in the book of revelation it says this in the book of deuteronomy and so you don't want to be on the losing side and jesus you see is the one that was appointed he is the christ he is the head of the body and so we don't want to be full of pride as simon the magician didn't say we don't want to be like him because he's a magician but it says you don't want to be like him because he's just faking it he doesn't have the authority of Jesus and he wants only to gain power yes the only reason the Apostles condemned him they were gonna make him a Christian he got baptized they were like all right let's get baptized but then the Apostle Peter says I don't I can see in your heart it's not right but you want to get gain from this you have no part with us we're not gonna make you an Apostle you you're not worthy of being an ambassador for Jesus because your heart's not right that's all this is about they were burning books in the book of Acts we don't know what they were burning but it does not anywhere in there say magic that has anything to do with magic it says they were meddlers and here we have Christians running around today um, 
that are, are so you know old busted up inside over the fact that oh man you might be producing you know you might be doing magic that's wrong but what Jesus commanded them to do cast out spirits and binding spirits and healing people and stuff like that and getting visions and they're like well we don't know what all that is but you know so we just don't do it or you know we think it's done away or something come on admit your confusion you're gonna have to read the New Testament a little bit deeper than that and just find some word in there so oh so there's magic oh, okay and that guy that did the magic was bad so we don't do any magic but wait a minute it also says visions so maybe you should do visions maybe you should figure out how to get a vision do you know how to have a vision while you're standing here in broad daylight well you have to focus see you have to be able to bring up a vision into the forefront and ignore all of this physical around you. So people use crystal balls or flames or various methods. The Apostle Paul talked about a, a glass, which is a dark glass. This was a preferred method for many, many years by many wizards. And, um, you know, sometimes they use a, a, a particular object. This is why the, in Aladdin's lamp, with the genie in Aladdin's lamp, they has this lamp. See, it wasn't always a lamp. We, the story makes it look like genies are inside of lamps and you rub them and they come out. That's not what it's about. It's about an object. And in these rituals and these ceremonies, they would take a particular object. It could be a lamp or it could be a watch or it could be a rock. And they would confine the spirit and in this particular object, would associate it with this particular object. And there was a certain ceremony that they did. And so in the case with the apostles, like the apostle Peter, they would associate Peter and his authority and his power with something, an object that he had touched or he had, he had been associated with. And, and the Bible talks about these handkerchiefs that they would use. Peter would bless the handkerchief or somehow he was associated with that object and then they would take that object and people were healed. Because it had authority, because it was had a ceremony, a blessing was put over it. So anyway, friends, uh, I'm gonna probably go ahead and go. This is good for a number two, and uh, I'll let you mull that over. And we're gonna get into a number three here pretty quick as soon as I can get back to you. I've got a lot of stuff I'm trying to do. I'm trying to build my cabin, and I've had to run around and get supplies and materials and stuff like that. And I wasn't able to do a video for a couple three days. So I'll try to get back as soon as I can, maybe uh, tomorrow or the next day, and get that video number three out to you. I hope you guys have a really great day. This is David Vos and, uh, from Oklahoma. We'll see you tomorrow. Wow, so beautiful. The whole field is full of those yellow flowers. And boy, are they pretty. I just love these yellow flowers. Mm -hmm.